So did you ever notice, for instance, the survival instincts of the body? How devoted the body is to this existence, its apparent existence. So it will avoid harm, it will seek to be safe. And then another example, so this draw towards, um, how can I put this, a loving experience. So the draw towards this life being wonderful. And that can manifest in many ways, but in a common way, so suffering. (laughs) So it may seem like a really strange connection to make between a loving, devoted um, a draw towards that, a magnetism towards a loving embrace, if you like, and then to experience suffering it seems to me very clear that suffering only exists because the draw is for something to be so perfect, so wonderful, that there would be no pain or there would be no separation. And yet what is experienced is then not that, and so suffering occurs. So if there wasn't love underneath of this, then there wouldn't be any suffering. That's quite interesting. What is identification? How does it arise? Or how does it, um, what keeps it here? What makes it strong? We speak about the belief in it. So I believe myself to be that separate one. And so we can point out the illusion. And we can see the illusion. Maybe the clarity is just, it's easy to see. Well, I'm not that one in thought. And yet, what powers that identification? Because See, the illusion is one thing, but it seems to be sometimes just glued on. What's the glue that keeps that identification in place? So I guess that's what I'm coming around to, is that the glue that keeps the identification in place is the love. It's the loving embrace that, you know, until it's it's really deeply... um, perceived, if you like, that the separate separate one in thought is not us, then there's no choice but for this loving embrace to hold that and to support it and try to keep it healthy and strong. So we wonder about, um, you know, isn't this selfish to seek this? Isn't it selfish to try to free myself when there's all these other things to attend to, all these other people suffering in the world, or or even just to spend all of this time um, on myself. Isn't that selfish? What I feel is that while what we're seeing is a separate self. While we believe ourselves to be the separate one, then there's no choice. You can't be anything but selfish. And it's because of the love. This love that we are is totally devoted to trying to work this out, to make this work, this separate one. That's not, uh, doesn't seem like a bad thing to me. (laughs) In fact, it seems quite wonderful that that should be such a total devotion to making that work. So maybe we then begin to wake up out of this illusion. We start to realize that we are not this separate one in thought. We start to see something from another perspective. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see this idea of who I think I am. There it is in the mind. It's not me, something else is emerging, which then, you know, this loving embrace, it becomes wider. So it's it's also, it may still be 
devoted to this one. That, hasn't, that story is not done yet, or that bond, that glue is, hasn't, hasn't dissolved. <laughs> what do you use to dissolve glue? Um, solvent, you know. This solvent hasn't dissolved the glue of the identification, but it's also now embracing something a little pure, maybe. Uh, you could call it awakening, I guess, but this sense of an open awareness, this that we are, that is not thought. So before it's like this, these are my thoughts, this is who I think I am, and it's right here in my face. I can't see anything else. So everything, so isn't it understandable that love would just be, that's where the love is, it's trying to support that, trying to keep it safe, trying to make it okay, trying to make sense of it. And then a little bit of distance, for, who knows why? For some reason, a little bit of perspective reveals, yes, that's there, but then there's this too. And so this is also embraced. Isn't this wonderful? You know, this is. And then when the awakening really gathers some strength, when something really opens, it's as though, and this was the experience here, it's like, well, yeah, that one up there in thought, don't need that anymore. <laughs> I'm going to reject that now, and then just grab onto this awakening. Yes, this is where the love is. I just want to be this. <laughs> and so, maybe we hold on to the awakening, or maybe we hold on to the teaching which has revealed it, and we become uh, somehow glued onto that. <laughs> We glue onto an experience of what happened, onto an opening, or we glue onto a teaching. And it has to be these words. Why is he saying that? Why can't he say these words? I don't like these. I don't like what he's saying. I don't want to hear about that. I want the new non-dual chop. That's all I want to hear. So that I'm just describing how this, you know, this love is moving. So it loves them that, it loves the teaching. And uh, can you see how this is? Uh, it becomes a limitation because freedom wants the elbow room, doesn't it? it? Just wants to be. Hey, I don't need any limitation. I don't need an understanding. I don't need to hold on to anything. And then. I guess then there's another movement there. There's the uh, now the embrace is for the freedom, the freedom to be anything and everything, and, the, and it feels to me as though then what develops is just this loving embrace for what is, whatever it is, all of it, any of it, changing any moment it can be this. Yes, it can be this can be this teaching, and then maybe this one that was rejected, it might make an appearance. Oh, today, oh, hello, <laughs> I remember you. And yeah, let's just uh, let's just have a few moments together. Let's enjoy this. This uh, let's enjoy this afternoon. Let's go for a little stroll, and uh, you can tell me all your uh, concerns. <laughs> and so that's again, it's embraced. What's the problem with that? And then it dissolves again, it's gone. So this, I'm describing something that's very fluid. Do you notice how fluid this is? It's not fixed anywhere. It doesn't need to be fixed anywhere. Not even in some idea of awakening or some idea of a teaching. All teachings dissolve in the end. They do their job and then they become obsolete. <laughs> 